It was a warm spring day. My apprentice lay sprawled out on the grass, dozing gently. Tell me, what are you thinking so deeply about? I teased. His eyes fluttered open and turned toward the sky. Catching a falling flower petal in his palm, he calmly mused. Why is it that everything beautiful in this world fades so quickly? His smile was as warm as the autumn breeze, and I could not help but grin. The beauty of a fluttering petal is only possible because of its fall, I replied. So too does the beauty of life stem from its brevity. Never trust anyone who speaks of forever. Nothing under the sun can withstand the winds of time. Anyone who promises eternity is certainly a liar. But as a knight, I too had made an oath of eternity. We looked at one another and bellowed with laughter. It was a warm, warm spring day. Episode 6, Sharenian Nights was a kingdom called Sherenian. It was a place of idyllic beauty, the kind matched only by fairy tales. There I led a small band of knights. Chief among our duties was... The Hunting of Demons. The Hunting of Demons? 
Until just a few years ago, this was where I instructed the young prince in the arts of battle. After training, we would sometimes stop and gaze out upon the kingdom. Swathed in the glow of the setting sun, it was truly beautiful. And sometimes, that frightened me. For you see, all things of beauty must one day fade even the great kingdom of Sherenium. There will come a day when it is no more than an empty ruin. And only the stories of its majesty will remain. <sighs> From time to time, I still reflect on the conversation we had here. I never imagined you'd come here in person. If his majesty finds out... I'm an apprentice coming to see his master. Who could find fault in that? Hmm. 
Is there trouble at the palace? You know the king better than anyone. It was you he trusted most. His majesty has lost his mind. <sighs> All this time, he's been obsessed with rumors about that gem's power. He spent years scouring the country for it, and researching dark sorceries that might suit his goals. And recently, he's gone so far as to attempt to summon a demon. The palace is already rife with gossip. He won't succeed. No, I don't suspect he will either. But I still can't just stand by and watch. If I do nothing and a horrific tragedy takes place, it will be too late then for regrets. <sighs> this land is so beautiful. Master, Sharenian is my home. My responsibility. History may remember me as little more than a power-hungry traitor to the crown. I must protect this nation at any cost. So you're really going to go through with it? Once you start down this path, there's no going back. I am well aware of that. There are only two possible fates for one who seeks to usurp the throne. die in the effort, or they become the new king. <gasps> Master, I... <sighs> My prince, it's time to return. <sighs> I'll come and see you after I've done what I must. When that time comes, I hope you'll agree to serve as my knight. Of course. As he turned to walk away, I wanted to stop him. But I couldn't bring myself to do it. I tried not to dwell on what he had said. Die or become the new king. The prince shrank into the distance. Meanwhile, his words loomed larger and larger in my mind. I had pledged to defend Sherenian. I decided to focus on that truth. That and nothing else. I knew it! I knew you were after my throne! This act of... Treason will never be forgiven! I have no need to justify myself to you. 
Surrender your crown peacefully. Ugh, arrogant bastard child! I never should have allowed you into the palace! I knew it would come to this! You want to take everything away from me! You still believe that? This is all your own doing. Captain! Where's the guard, Captain? Kalad! Kalad! You really don't remember? You dismissed him from your court. You intended to punish him for treason. But I stopped you. Once he held a position of honor, but has been reduced to leading a band of failed knights because of you. God, Captain! Where's Kalad? Eliminate this insolent whelp immediately! Have you lost what's left of your mind? Arrest him, and find the gem! The nightmare is finally over. I almost didn't make it in time. My prince, over there! What's this? How? I won't let you take what's mine! The throne, or the Rubian! I won't let you steal my bloodright! Master! possible fates for one who seeks to usurp the throne. They either die in the effort, or they become the new king.
return to hell! Uh, does anybody here speak demon? I don't speak their infernal tongue, but I do know how to slay a demon. Engaging target. Taste the might of a demon hunter! Attack!
do as you've pledged. Guard this kingdom forever. I shook my head, trying to drive off the many thoughts flooding through my mind. Guard the kingdom forever. Yes, that's precisely what I wanted. I will guard it forever. Sorry, I... There's no need to speak. Please, uphold your promise. Don't worry. I haven't forgotten.
a slew of attempts and tried many strategies. Eventually, we came to realize a few things. First, that the prince was beyond saving. It did not matter how quickly we arrived. His fatal wound was sustained before the moment to which we were always transported. Second, Defeating the demon before he managed to utter his curse did not prevent us from suffering its effects. Third, the longer it took for us to reach the demon, the stronger he grew. And fourth, his name was... Urgoth Dunamis. set. We fought and fought. Each time we defeated the demon, watched the prince breathe his last breath. We recovered the Rubian, and then we were back at the beginning. Every single time.
moment I said those words, I regretted them. Because when I said eventually, I felt more nervous than hopeful. More uncertain than reassured. It seemed my companions felt the same. Each responded with only silence. Commander. What is it? How many more times must we wage this fight? Hmm. This could be the last battle. Or there could be a hundred more. <sighs> Is something weighing on you? One of the civilians was a little girl. That first day, I managed to save her. But after that... changed our route. We've relived this day 35 times since then. That's 35 times I've abandoned her to her fate. I can't help but think about what would have happened to her each of those times. I've grown accustomed to the battle against the demon. But this is something I don't know if I can ever get used to. Used to. Master? I did not reply to Harden. I couldn't find the words. All I could do was stand there in silence. But that was not the first time I stood silent. There are only two possible fates for one who seeks to usurp the throne. They either die in the effort, or they become the new king. Master, I... Driving me crazy. We tried to take turns resting, but it was of little help. It was like giving a drop of water to one dying of thirst in the middle of the desert. The constant siege of demons was a problem, of course. But what bothered us more than anything was that. Blasted son. The sun that followed us ceaselessly. We could not escape it even when we closed our eyes.
I sat down slowly and discreetly covered my ears. But that voice that had been ringing in my head for so long, it would not stop crying out. Master. Stand aside! I'm afraid I can't do that. Step aside this instant! That bastard child! He means to take everything from me! This kingdom and the Rubian! Raising a blade against a member of the royal family is unacceptable. Even for a king. Move! Your duty is to protect me! Your Majesty, I am protecting you. From yourself. Killing a royal family member would be... You no longer even consider me your king! Is that it? You think that bastard will soon become king? Even despite his dirty bloodline? Your Majesty, that's not what I'm saying. Guards! This man intends to... Intends to... Treason! Master, you must stand aside. If you don't, both of us will be killed. I cannot do that, Your Highness. Please understand. It's all right. Please, just promise me one thing. If I end up dying... That gem... The Rubian... Please, protect... Master. No, that's not right. King, his majesty ended up relinquishing his blade that day. Why have you abandoned me? Your Highness. Why have you abandoned me? No, I... Your Highness, I never... You knew. You knew why I'd come to see you that day. There are only two possible fates for one who seeks to usurp the throne. They either die in the effort, or they become the new king. Master, I... Master... Master... I'd fought this enemy so many times, the battle had become routine. I swung my blade again and again. But no matter how fiercely I fought, or how swiftly I moved, that dream, that memory, that voice, they would not leave me alone.
The unending fatigue was eating away at our sanity. I'm not sure when it began, but everyone started to change. Noble Hardin began striking the enemy while their back was turned, without a moment's hesitation. I began to exert more magic against the enemy than was necessary. Ryan loosed arrows at his targets with little regard for anything in the way. And Ed simply stopped speaking. Quig was the only one who seemed unaffected. Because he... Master. <gasps> you failed to save me once again. This is all your own doing. <sighs> you knew, didn't you? What I was trying to say. The words I could never bring myself to speak. There are only two possible fates for one who seeks to usurp the throne. They either die in the effort, or they become the new king. Master, I... No. Stop this. I'm so afraid. Please, protect me. Your Highness, I... Master, please protect me. Even if that means you have to raise your sword against the king you once protected. Even if that means you have to abandon your pledge and your pride. Please raise your sword just this once. In defense not of the kingdom, but the one you hold most dear. Stop! Master, I'm... afraid. You chose to remain silent. Your pride, your hypocritical sense of honor, your own self-delusion. They were more important to you, Master. Look and see. See the results of your silence. See what occurred here because you stood by and did nothing. No, I... Remember this, no matter how many times you relive this day, be it a thousand times, or a million, you cannot change what happened. Master, I'm sorry. Please, uphold your promise, even if you have to stand alone. Uphold my promise. I swear it.
my comrades began to grow suspicious of one another. They started to forget what they were fighting for. They brutalized the demon as if purely seeking to unleash their frustrations upon it. That was about the time. The time I started to feel that before long I would end up losing them. His absence made our fight more and more difficult. That led others to falter, especially Ein. And after another dozen trips back in time, Ed died. After that, Hardin's sword grew unsteady. Then Ryan grew hesitant to loose his- And Ein began breaking into fits of delirious laughter. I realized that we were approaching the end of our rope. I wasn't sure how much more of this we could take. Yet still, I forged on. I couldn't stop, because... Please. Please, uphold your promise. I have not forgotten my pledge. Our pledge? What happened, Harden? You're getting sloppy. Do you hear that? Someone's screaming. Harden, focus! When you fail to verify the enemy has been neutralized, you endanger us all! The screaming... I'm sure... It... It must be Ed. What? What are you talking about? Ed's... Ed's fine. No. Wait, Ed, Ed is... Ed... Did he die in battle? Was it my fault again? I think... I think it was me. Yes. It was my fault. This isn't good. If we don't put an end to this soon... It was Ryan. Hmm? It was Ryan's arrow that killed me. It 
blade went straight through my shoulder. It was... me? A hallucination? But how could everyone be seeing the same thing? <laughs> everyone, focus! You can still save me. Look what the commander has in his hand. Is that... the Rubian? You can save me, Ein. Ein. Save. Ed! Commander. The Rubian. It's said to have the power to cure any ailment, even to bring the dead back to life. Hmm. Is it already too late? Yes, the Rubian. We can use the Rubian. Save him. Please, use the Rubian to save Ed. We have to save the girl. She's already suffered. So many times. How many times have I abandoned her? The screaming! The screaming is back again! I have an idea. We should revive the king. He was the one who summoned the demon in the first place. He has to know how to banish it, how to put an end to this curse. We cannot use the Rubian on anyone. Why not? That's right. It's because of the prince, isn't it? Because you have to save the prince. The prince you love more than your own friends. That's not it. You're a liar. I've always suspected it. You made a pledge to the prince. You promised you'd save him using the Rubian. This was never about protecting Sherinian. He put us through all this just to bring the prince back to life. It. That's how you've managed to keep it together all this time! None of you seem to remember. I've told you several times the pledge I made to the pr The screaming... It won't stop! That girl... What... is my mission? <sighs> Is to eliminate your former comrades. <laughs> the Rubian, it shattered. Why? Could it... could it be this whole time? The Rubian was a fake. It's just an ordinary gemstone. Then what about your pledge? You promised the prince. You must stand aside. If you don't, both of us will be killed. I cannot. It's all right. Please, just promise me one thing. If my life ends here, you must protect Sherenian. All the way to the end. So long as a single soul remains in Sherenian, you must protect them. Your Highness. I give you my word. As part of my pledge to protect the kingdom, the prince asked that I destroy the Rubian somewhere all could see. It was the only way to prevent another mad king from rising to covet its power. <laughs> <laughs> we had no idea. We were such fools. <laughs> Ed, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <sighs> Is he... 
dead. Do you regret it? <sighs> They're all gone. There's no more reason to pretend you don't see me. You're right. It really is just me now. Or rather, me and you. An illusion. An illusion? Master, had you ever seen an illusion before your encounter with the demon? Of course not. Then... How can you be so sure what is real, and what is the illusion? <gasps> Are all those that have fallen here an illusion? Or am I, who stands before you, very much alive, an illusion? Or, perhaps all of this, your fallen subordinates, the king, all of Sherenian, are the farce? Or maybe... My dear master, you are the illusion. How could you even tell? You're not making any sense. Master, look up at the sky. The halo. It's almost completely vanished. The curse has weakened as its subjects have expired. So too has the boundary between reality and illusion begun to fall apart at the seams. Between reality and illusion? What illusion? The one your fallen lady friend mentioned. What if all of this is a lie? What if we're not actually reliving the same day, but rather trapped in an illusion? That simply makes it seem that way. What do we do if that's what's really happening? Ergoth Dunamis. His power is to create illusions. <sighs> the demon has not been turning back time. It simply created a false reality to imprison you and your allies. This place is no more than a mirror he created of the real Sherenian. That's preposterous. That would mean in the real Sherenian. As you diligently waged your endless battle, time passed just the same in the real world. Centuries have passed since you arrived here. That cannot be true. Sherenian fell the very same day Urgoth was first summoned. Atop its ashes, he built a prosperous demon empire. But in time, even it fell, at the hands of a band of adventurers. Now nothing remains but Urgoth and the gem he guards. Protecting the Rubian. That was the contract struck between the king and Urgoth. Ridiculous. Do you really think I believe such a bold lie? Lies. All lies. Be gone, illusion! Though centuries have already passed, I still remember that conversation we once had, Master. Master. Why is it that everything beautiful in this world fades so quickly? <gasps> and you replied. The beauty of a fluttering petal is only possible because of its fall. So too does the beauty of life stem from its brevity. You are right, Master. Just like the fluttering petals, Sherenian and the lives of its people were beautiful because they were fated to end. <laughs> but if, if... what you say is true, 
Then what have I been fighting for all this time? Harden, Ein, Ryan, Quig, and Ed. For what have we done all this? For what did they have to die? Master, you remember your pledge from that day. The promise you have made over and over again. My promise? Until the very end, so long as a single soul remains in Sherenian, you promised to protect them, did you not? So long as... A single soul. <gasps> That's right. You still have me. Sharenian is not yet lost. With the ruby and your allies can be brought back to life. Master, with the ruby and you can keep your eternal pledge. Eternal. And that's what happened. That's an incredible story. When I escaped the world of illusion, Urgoth Dunamis, that terrible demon, was waiting for me. But I had vanquished him so many times that doing so once more brought me a little satisfaction. What about your allies? Did you bring them back with the gem? No. Not just yet, that is. Hey, guys. Something's not right here. Ah. Now, here's the Rubian. Just as I promised. Take it. The power you came here to find. Eternal life! The glory of the Master! Run! Run as fast as your chubby little legs will carry you! I am the hunter. You are the prey. Target located. Initiating extermination protocol. Let's get this party started. Mogadin, the Black Knight. Kaliai, the Mad Mage. Jirai, the Vicious Hunter. CQ-57, the Rampant Cyborg. Freed, the Bad Brawler. Arise. Arise and stand beside. Magnificent one! <laughs> I really don't know what the Magnificent One is thinking sometimes. I understand that over the course of hundreds of thousands of battles and pledges, a soul could be refined into one of incredible power. But by mixing in the power of a transcendent, he's created a monster. <laughs> what use could he have for such an unthinking puppet? If you examine the facts, one can easily infer two things. Hmm? The fact that the Black Mage, one who foresees all, has created a monster like him. It means an enemy with incredible power will arise. How captivating. I wonder who they will be.
A foe who possesses such power. I'm not sure I can imagine it. And what was the second thing? Secondly. Ah,、uh, I've forgotten. <sighs> you fool. Secondly, it means he needs a servant of unimpeachable loyalty, one who could never betray him under any circumstances. In any case, it seems demons are more useful than I imagined. The power to create a false world, a replica of reality in all its exquisite detail, <laughs> truly fascinating. Sherenian. A civilization with knowledge of sorcery, and where even demons yielded to men. Surely some traces must remain. It was a warm spring day. My apprentice lay sprawled out on the grass, dozing gently. Tell me, what are you thinking so deeply about? I teased. His eyes fluttered open and turned toward the sky. Catching a falling flower petal in his palm, he calmly mused. Why is it that everything beautiful in this world fades so quickly? His smile was as warm as the autumn breeze, and I could not help but grin. The beauty of a fluttering petal is only possible because of its fall. I replied. So too does the beauty of life stem from its brevity. Never trust anyone who speaks of forever. Nothing under the sun can withstand the winds of time. Anyone who promises eternity is certainly a liar. But as a knight, I too had made an oath of eternity. We looked at one another and bellowed with laughter. It was a warm, warm spring day. Thank、you